we've collected all of the studies together. The first studies began in 1986 of, of studies that have looked at these drugs called SERMs, selective estrogen receptor modulators, uh, in, and their role in preventing breast cancer. Tamoxifen is one of them, and it's the only one that's actually used to treat breast cancer, and it gave us our first lead because uh, when using it to prevent recurrence of breast cancer, we discovered that it also prevented new tumors in the opposite breast. And that led me uh, some years ago to actually suggest that we should actually look at it in prevention. So there have been, there have been now four major prevention trials doing that. It's absolutely proven now. I mean, the, the reduction overall is about 40%. And so it you only treat well women with tamoxifen and they yeah. don't get breast cancer? Uh, well, they get less breast cancer. It's reduced by 40%. I think there's been a, a number of, uh, of reluctant things. The cardiologists have recognized for a long time that if you treat somebody before they get disease, you could do a bigger, you have kind of having a bigger effect than waiting for them to get disease. So if you went to your doctor with high cholesterol and said, uh, and he said, come back in a year, we'll see if you had a heart attack, you wouldn't be very pleased. But in fact, that's what we do in breast cancer. High risk women simply get screened more often and they wait for the cancers to occur. So this is the idea is to bring this paradigm of preventing breast cancer uh, to the cancer field. Raloxifene um, actually started out as a drug for osteoporosis and in a large trial in which women with osteoporosis uh, were being treated to prevent bone fractures, uh, it was discovered that in fact they also had a reduction in breast cancer. So that was identified and further studies were conducted with breast cancer as the primary endpoint and it was discovered also had a major effect on preventing breast cancer. There are two new ones, well, fairly new now, one called lazofoxifene and one called arzoxifene. Again, they both started out as osteoporosis drugs, and the trials were in women with osteoporosis trying to prevent fractures. And uh, uh, again, they showed very big effects on breast cancer reduction. We got all the trialists together to give us their individual patient data, and we put all of this together into one big overview of all of these studies to get an overall estimate of the benefits and the risks of these different drugs. And we found uh, that there was a, a large reduction in breast cancer, it was 38% overall. Uh, it occurred not only during the five years of active treatment, but continued for five years after that. So we've done a 10-year follow-up on all of these studies now. These SERMs only work for what are called estrogen receptor positive breast cancer. This is about 70 to 80 percent of breast cancer, depending on age, and they reduce that by a little over 50 percent. Selecting high risk is still something where we need to do more work, but the major factors are family history, a mother or sister with breast cancer below the age of 50, or two breast cancers in the family. The other factors that are important and established are women with benign breast lumps that have abnormal features, atypical hyperplasia, lobular carcinoma in situ, and probably the most important factor, but not currently used very much, is breast density, which can be seen on a mammogram. Worldwide now, they're estimated to be more than 1.4 million cases of breast cancer. Uh, in the top 10% of the population, we probably have about 20% of those, so that's a little over a quarter of a million cases per year that we could find in this high-risk group that might be suitable for tamoxifen or a CIRM. Two major side effects, which are both fairly rare, are thromboembolic disease, blood clots, and the risk is approximately doubled, about 80% increase. That, uh, that's about the same as hormone replacement therapy, so it is the, the most serious side effect. And we estimate that, for example, in a thousand women that took one of these drugs for five years, you would have about six extra cases. The other, uh, the other concern, which is actually mixed, it's really only seen clearly with tamoxifen, is endometrial cancer. And again, that's a little more than doubled with, with tamoxifen. 
But it, it's quite rare, and I think uh, doctors have become much more aware that any abnormal bleeding in women with tamoxifen needs immediate investigation. So these cases are generally all being found very early where you can treat them with just a hysterectomy and, and nothing additional. Um, I think there's clear evidence that this is a, a winner in terms of prevention. It's particularly uh, to, uh, appropriate tamoxifen for premenopausal women because you don't have the endometrial cancer risk. We estimate that if you took high-risk women with roughly double the average risk, um, there would be about, in every 1,000 women, over a 10-year period, we'd, we would prevent about 20 breast cancers. There would be about three extra endometrial cancers and about six extra uh, thromboembolic events. So the cancers are clearly the most serious of those events and the, the effect sizes are larger, so it's clearly a winner. Yeah, the newer serums sadly are not being promoted for breast cancer prevention. Of them, lazofoxifene appear to have the best profile because not only did it prevent a, you know, a little bit more breast cancer, about 50%, uh, but it also had a, a beneficial effect on fractures, which it was designed for, but also heart disease and strokes. So if you could get a preventative agent that would actually affect a range of diseases, this is particularly important in the general population or well women. I think we need to raise the profile of the fact that cancer is a preventable disease, just like the cardiologists have done. Um, people now consider high blood pressure, high cholesterol to be a disease. In fact, all it is is a risk factor. We have the similar risk factors for breast cancer, and we should begin to, to treat them as well. So the first thing is I think we need regulatory approval for these drugs. Sadly, they're all virtually out of patent now, so the companies aren't inclined to, to go through the process of regulatory approval. Um, in the UK now, the NICE committee, the National Institute for Clinical Excellence, has now recommended that either raloxifene or tamoxifen be considered for high-risk women. So that's a very positive step in the right direction and hopefully will provide the stimulus and the confidence for doctors to begin to use this more. I think the next step, though, is to actually begin to educate GPs and, and the population in general that breast cancer is a potentially preventable disease and we really should put more effort on doing that. I believe they should. They, they should identify women who have had a strong family history of breast cancer, have had a benign lump, or even those that have very dense breasts, and discuss with them the options. But I think the benefits do outweigh the risks for most of these women.